gonna kill me. He gave her the sword ah, to kill me. He gave her. She's, she's his precious. Wow. She's, she's, a, she's, a, she's a powerful. She's powerful. She's gonna kill me. Come on. Come on. Right now. I'm about to kill her before she kills me. That's it, right now? Jesus is she... killing you. She's gonna kill me. Come up. Come up, you unclean. Oh, no, I can't. Right now, get out of here. I have to kill her. No, you don't. I do. Jesus Christ defeated you right now. Come up. I come at you. Oh! Come out of her. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Lucifer, once and for all, never enter again. Spirit of death, spirit of suicide. Lucifer, you never enter again. That's it. Lucifer, you're back on the floor. You're back on the floor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lucifer, right now, completely, and never enter again. You're back on the floor. Jesus wants you out. She doesn't want you. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out, right now. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Help. Would you please share uh, your name and where you're from? My name is Amal, and I'm originally from Morocco, but we live in Virginia. Come on. Thank you so much again for um, agreeing to share. This is, like we, we love to say, a seed for someone else's salvation, deliverance, and breakthrough. And it's a bold step for you, and you will find out why. Would you please start sharing a little bit, uh, wh what is the background that you're coming from and the things that you were struggling with? I was a Muslim my whole life. My family are still Muslim. I met someone who was a Christian, and uh, we started dating, and he invited me to his church, but I had a plan to converted him to Islam because if you're a Muslim you cannot uh, marry a Christian so I decided to go to his church and as uh, with the plan of bringing him to, to mosque but as I was going to church I started to see how people were happy and how they were joyful then when I started questioning but at the same time I was not questioning like that if they're right or wrong but it was just confusing. Uh, I, was, I was then struggling with, uh, I couldn't sleep at nighttime. I had trouble sleeping. And I was told, if you say the name of Jesus, um, then you'll be able to sleep. But for me, the name of Jesus was something uh, similar if I tell you, call in Abraham. So it was kind of weird. <laughs> um, but it was got really bad. Then I just gave in and I called in the name of Jesus. And I remember that night I slept like a baby. So that night you called on the name of Jesus and you slept like a baby. So what happened with you afterwards? Um, I mean, afterward, I woke up really upset, like, what's going on? <laughs> um, so what I did is I prayed, I, I called my friend, and then they told me, like, how about you just pray to Jesus, and he'll be able to answer you. So I was like, okay, this is nonsense, <laughs> but I'll do it. So I prayed to Jesus, and I asked, uh, Jesus, if you are real, then show yourself to me. Um, and then I remember I, I just went to bed that night, and I did sleep well. <laughs> Uh, next day, I was invited to a party. I was with my friends. Um, and then I went to the bathroom, and then there was this girl that was uh, kind of uh, talking. And all of a sudden, she started talking to me and, and prophesying, telling me, you're going to be okay, and Jesus loves you. And I said, okay. Jesus what <laughs> she said yeah Jesus loves you and I asked her is like should I accept him as my Lord and Savior and she said uh, yes sure <laughs> but I felt like a God was calling me at that time I didn't know it was happening but I was just going with the flow because it was like just happening so I said Jesus I believe in you as my Lord and Savior and that very moment the Holy Spirit came like a wind and that filled me up all of a sudden I was seeing like a black and white but I didn't know that I was seeing black and white until the Holy Spirit came and all of a sudden I could see things in colors and uh, as I looked to my left side I saw Jesus standing with the fullness of light and glory um, so in the bathroom, I was just <laughs> pointing to the left side saying, it's Jesus. Don't you see him? <laughs> 
So they thought I was drunk. They're like, you okay? <laughs> Maybe you need water. I said, no, because I, I, I was laughing. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I started asking girls around me, like, do you believe in Jesus? He's right there. Um, <laughs> they thought I was crazy. But uh, that night I went to, to my house and I, I was like, no, this is just, I was just hallucinating. It's not it's not happening. Um, but then I start questioning why didn't Muhammad show it up to me? Because in Islam, we, they believe is Muhammad and uh, Abraham and Jesus all are prophets. Um, and then I started asking, how did I know that was Jesus? How did I just point out and say that's Jesus? So maybe there is more into this Jesus than just a man or a prophet. Um, and that night, I decided, you know what, this is too much. <laughs> I'm just not going to forget about it. And the Lord appeared to me again, and he said, you belong with me. You belong in my Father's house, and I'm coming for you. Come on, let's give God the glory. Jesus, we love you. Jesus is the true God, and he loves you so much. Um, we are so excited for this testimony. <laughs> you have no idea. So what happened after that and the things that you were still battling with? Um, I mean, after that, I was experiencing a lot of darkness. All of a sudden, I could, uh, it's like the darkness was masked beyond things, behind things. And that mask just was lifted off. And all of a sudden, I could feel darkness. And I could feel like there was like a tension around me uh, but through it the Lord was leading me into reading the word of God and just the word would just pop up and I would see things and they would come to life um, and uh, for a whole year I was still practicing Islam uh, but at the same time I was going to church because I couldn't leave Islam due to the fact that um, it will cost me everything. It will cost me my family. It will cost me um, uh, my life. <laughs> um, because <laughs> She's actually not joking. Today is actually her first time that she's coming out publicly as a Christian. Yes, yes. And... She is sharing as a shy girl, but we have to understand the seriousness of what she's talking about, okay? It, it, she's not just saying it will cost her whole life. She is meaning that literally it might cost her her life, okay, guys? It's not just some kind of a joke or uh, she's just being dramatic on a stage. And um, Yeah, so that's the reason why I didn't share. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> but God, God said it's time because if I don't give him my life, then I'm not worthy to follow him. Um, but he, yeah, <laughs> come on, let's give her a round of applause one more time. What a wonderful testimony. As we continue, would you please um, start maybe sharing of how did you end up at the Race to Deliver conference and what happened to you there and why did you come for deliverance? Oh, so after, I, after a year I accepted Jesus, I decided that this is the truth and um, I'm going to go ahead and step in. I got baptized. After I got baptized, um, the Lord has um, taken me into a 40 days journey in the spirit. He has given me a, a sword and he has uh, crowned me and dressed me in white. And he said to me that now you are a child of God, that you are seated high with me next to the Father. You're no longer a slave, and now you can fight. Um, so, come on, guys, let's give a round of applause. If we clap, we clap. <laughs> but um, as I was getting attacks at that time, I decided this is just too much going on, too spiritual. It's out of the normal. And I was like, God, I don't want to mess with this devil <laughs> about it. Just leave peace. <laughs> and God was like, if you don't fight, he's going to attack you anyways. But with me, you are able to fight back. You're able to, to, to step on him because I have, I have given you the authority to trample 
over scorpions and serpents and all the power of the devil and nothing shall harm you. Um, but then when I got married, it was, um, it, was, uh, it was hard to, I didn't know how to bring this, my spiritual life into my marriage. So I decided to just, uh, I slowly started to um, become, make this world a, more of a reality. And God started to fade um, in my life slowly and gradually. So I fell into a very deep depression. Um, and when, I, when that happened, um, it affected my marriage. It affected my, uh, my relationship with my daughter because I would not feel safe being around her. I remember I thought I was going crazy mentally because, and then when I talk to people, they're like, postpartum depression is normal, especially if you went through hardship. I couldn't settle with that because I have tasted the Lord. So it's, um, it's hard to just settle with something like that. Um, but then my husband came across Pastor Vlad's sermon, and uh, I, we started watching. And as we were watching, uh, I was feeling like I was coming back. God is raising me back up uh, from, from being dormant, from being dead spiritually. Um, and then after that, I started spending time with God. And when I started going back to that, tapping into the Lord and in the Spirit, then things were manifesting, and they're like, please don't take us to the, the presence of the Lord. That's when I was like, I have company. <laughs> uh, that's when I, they got exposed, and then my husband was like, you know, there's a deliverance conference. I really didn't know what to expect, but I wasn't sure. And the Lord said, go, and you will meet me in a mighty way and so when you guys came to the conference and you know the spirits start manifesting through you the as a spirit of death and what were you going through in that moment first of all I did not want to say the spirit of death I was listening to what's was how, what's going on the spirit was saying is I have to kill her because if I don't she will kill me for he has given her the sword um, and he also, Pastor Vlad was saying to the spirit that Jesus wants you out. And I could, at that moment, I could uh, uh, feel in the spirit that Jesus was standing right where Pastor Vlad, and he was doing this to the spirit <laughs> of death. <laughs> and he, he knew that it has to go. It's Come on, let's give God the glory. <laughs> what a powerful story. And so... After the deliverance took place, you were vomiting blood and poisonous substances. You went back to the hotel and you continued to vomit all night. Would you please share a little bit about that and how do you feel after the deliverance? It was a continuous deliverance. So when I left, I was not feeling like all like what other people say all light and happy I felt more like uh, troubled and my body was also was uh, gripped but everyone in the conference was also speaking life and they're saying you're delivered you're delivered so I took that um, and I I went and through it and I said Lord I'm gonna take this and I'll work with this um, just the fact that things got exposed, God started something, he will bring it to an end. And if it's not right there, it's it's going to happen. <laughs> so how do you feel right now after the deliverance? Um, I feel I feel empowered by the Holy Spirit to, to stand my ground and to fight the, the, uh, the fight of the good fight of faith. Amen. Come on, that's so awesome. And lastly... We want to hear your advice to people who might find themselves in false religion, tormented by the enemy, doesn't, person might not know who the truth is, what is the truth, what would you tell them? Um, there are many doors, but the only door that will take you somewhere is Jesus. There are many keys, one key will open the door is Jesus. And if you're really, really seeking from your heart, just pray to him and he will show up because he's faithful. Come on, come on. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. What a powerful testimony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing.